College, the Vikings. And uh, starting off, of course, uh, with uh, Buanya, he will be on the tight head. We've got Rusere, who will be the hooker on the loose head. We've got uh, Vima Shami. And then the two locks will be Amini and Chavuta. And then in the loose trio, we do have Kurambui, Zambo, Ziwa, Ziwawa. And uh, uh, yeah, Ziwawa coming through as the eighth man. And then, of course, uh, look at Bruni Berry, number seven. Um, the two of them have made Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwean under nine, under 18 team. Uh, we've also got uh, Mutuiti, the before mentioned Mutuiti. He's also made Zim Zimbabwe. So they've got quite the talent here at St. George's College. And they've got quite the school that representing a school with a lot of history. And they know exactly what it will mean, especially with people coming out here on a weekend. It's not even a compulsory. Uh, doing rugby commentary, uh, why the captain wears number 99? Anything in particular there? It's just a distinguishing feature. It's uh, a tradition that actually started in 2018. Um, we thought that the number 19 would be significant if the captain wore it. No other school does it. So, of course, St. George's College likes to um, distinguish themselves from other schools. So they thought that would be an interesting thing. He's kicking boots on and working well for him in order to make this work. So let's see how he goes about it. The pre-kicking ritual, as usual, by many fly-offs. He goes for it. It looks like a decent kick. And uh, well done to him. He didn't drag it too much to the right. It was just maybe go for another mole here. A lot of big guys, as uh, Taona has been pointing out. Kyle trying to contest for the ball. That one goes uh, to the back of the line out. Takayendesa with a fend off. And he pushes himself all the way over the try line. And uh, St. George's are in for the second. And they now lead to 12 points to nil. So clear college. St. John's College are currently undefeated. And uh, Falcon College will be looking to put a dent in that one. So that's a successful conversion. Uh, so they are most probably going to push forward and go for another try. And it looks like this time round, maybe, just maybe, the Vikings might just hold them up. But it's now too close to call. And the Vikings are going to have to defend with their lives. And it is uh, phase after phase, pick and go after pick and go. And it is the try time again for St. George's. Oh, goodness me. Uh, if they are not careful, this could actually turn into a bloodbath. But it is try time again. So the pre-kicking ritual does continue. A long stare, a long stand, a long look at the ball. He goes for it. High, mighty. But this time round, he doesn't quite get the stage. is off. It's gone. And there we go. The pass comes through uh, to Luciano. Can he go over? He tries to go for a kick over. It has been grabbed, but immediately he's been taken out. And because of that high tackle, could that be signaled as a try or a penalty? It's a true penalty. Quick tap and go. Takaendesa goes over. And uh, the referee signals that it is a try time against Cal College. So quite unfortunate there for Cal College. They were sprawling in defense. Uh, there was no way exposing them there. And we've got the kick from Mzwiti there just misses. Yeah, so Mudzwiti there, unable to get that conversion over. And that is the end of this half. It is half time, And is uh, maybe kicking for touch here. Changunda has, uh, has the ball in hand. Well, it looks like he's going to go for a quick tap and go. He sends it out to uh, the tight end. That is uh, Nikavaranda, the other one. <laughs> because we did lose the other one within uh, the uh, first half. And here we go, a nice big hit. Again, can they continue now going down the line? Looks like uh, Choto sends it out to Hungwe. He pops it back to Choto. Choto trying to press his way through. Changunda sends the ball out again. Oh, goodness me. He dots down his fourth try. And it is a try time again for St. George's. It is version yet to come. Here we go. High, mighty, but unfortunately dragged wide. And so that means they will have to, to talk about with his boys. Uh, particularly, you know, today they've made a lot of mistakes. All of them have resulted in tries. And uh, really all of them have resulted in St. George's continuously dominating. They haven't won their set pieces. They struggled uh, in their lineouts at the uh, scrum. They're also being bustled and bossed. Uh, I mean, 
it's a something that they will definitely have to talk about when they go back all the way on the long trip back to Mashingo. Rimbo, I noticed you said talk about. They'll need to shout about this because this... These are schoolboys. We've got Choto going there. We've got the skipper, Hugwe. He breaks the line and he scores. It's an absolute bloodbath here on Weaver. And I do not mean... We're going to be able to get out of this one, the Vikings. And I think the conversation, as you said, uh, will be of a very high volume. <laughs> it will definitely not be of a low one. So, of course, I don't think any person who has watched this game would have any doubts about... Taka Endes are being the man of the match. Huge shout though for Wumbe, who looks like the man of the match. We've got an attack here by Brendan Mukwiti. He steps, he steps, he goes, he's gone! Blood ball there at St. George's College. The atmosphere is absolutely... Shut down the attacks of uh, St. George's. And with that conversion going through, the referee blows that that is the end of that. Putting an end to the misery of the Vikings. Another fantastic... <laughs>
Oh yes, uh, uh, talking about one of the me, uh, one of the men that did the business on the park for you. How immense was Takai Endesa this afternoon? Oh, he was very, very good. Uh, he was the defensive uh, leg that we needed. Someone who was giving hard hits and being in the right spots at the right time. So he was very crucial to the win. Oh yes, and whilst talking about that, you do have a couple of boys that have made it into the Zim under 18 squad. How uh, proud is that making the school as well? It's making us very proud. Uh, having five people selected for under 19 and a couple under 17 is very good. It has a lot of uh, positive effects on the team because now we have more confidence. Yeah. All right, so uh, it looks like you have uh, bounced back from uh, that loss against St. John's College. You came through, put in a, a ridiculously amazing performance against Prince Edward to win the Centenary Trophy. You've just beaten Cow College, but next weekend it's a different kettle of fish. You'll be having the Kings coming to Weaver Field. Yeah, that's going to be a very tough game, uh, obviously, but I think we'll manage. I think we have the right plays in mind, we have the right mindset, and we'll pull through. That's the, that's the objective. All right, well, congratulations for the win. I know there will be a few celebrations before hard work begins this week. Yes, that's, that's going to be very, very hard to get back into training and to get back, to get our minds back in and focus for the next game after a very nice win on Weaver. Well, congratulations for the win. Wish you the best. Thank you so much. All right, so that was the captain for St. George's uh, College there. Now we're going to have uh, the coach. I mean, he loves to smile ear to ear, uh, Ricky Chiringede. Well, Ricky, again, another big win uh, for you uh, coming against uh, Cal College. I mean, you were just all over them <laughs> like a rash. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it was a good spectacle. Our boys were at willingness to play and willingness to run. Uh, bit frustrating with the stoppages here and there but at the end of the day you, you know you're gonna be happy if you keep a clean sheet and you put that many points on the board all right uh is it fair to say i mean in the commentary box it was uh, an undoubted overwhelming uh vote for uh, takai as man of the match today i mean he just had a brilliant game yeah i think that that kid is he's got everything he's got raw strength raw power uh, but I think uh, a certain number seven, Barry, is also going to you know, gonna challenge him for that. But, but without a doubt, the, the Ford pack really worked hard in the engine room. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with your vote for men of the match at all. Well, it looks like the vote has been substantiated and the stamp has gone on. But uh, outside of that, um, I mean, bouncing back from uh, the St. John's loss, I mean, you've, you've, you beat a giant in Prince Edward, you've beaten Cow College, you literally railroaded them. But next week, different kettle of fish, you'll be inviting the Peterhouse Kings right here. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, again, it's game after game. Uh, we, that's all we planned. Uh, it's it's a, obviously a good place to be. Uh, going game after game after two good wins. Um, so, yeah, we'll look to fix on Monday, Tuesday, and then look what we can perfect and polish up come the weekend. Well, I'm actually being told it's actually Falcon, I believe, that you'll be facing next week. And uh, just in case you didn't know, we'll give you an update. Uh, Falcon have ended St. John's uh, run. Uh, they beat them in a very close match, 32 points to 30. Uh, so how does that make you feel, them coming through, having beaten an undefeated side? Well, that just makes it even more juicier, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll be up for it. I think that those are the games we want to play. The tough ones, uh, the, the exciting ones, where it's, it's a battle of the Giants. And I think our boys will be up for it. So, yeah, well done to, to Falcon. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be here waiting. Well, he's saying that with a big smile. Let's see if that smile will be there next week. But, Ricky, congratulations for your win. And we wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you, Rimba. Appreciate it.